new videos every day. Biological mind control. How do you mind control someone by altering the brain or the central nervous system? By this we're talking about controlling someone through physical means including mind altering drugs, electronic implants in the brain, electroshock therapy, and surgical brain operations. And yes, the CIA did experiment with this in the MK Ultra mind control program. Biological mind control is a complex subject and we can't even begin to cover it fully in just one short video. We'll have to do a series of videos. At some point, I will do a video on the CIA mind control experiments, but for now, we'll have to cover some of the basics. There is an entire school of psychology devoted to biological mind control. This is called biological psychology or psychiatry. This idea is pretty simple. Biological psychology assumes the brain is responsible for behavior. So by altering the brain, you should be able to alter behavior. This idea seems pretty reasonable. After all, if you cut out a section of someone's brain, you most certainly are going to alter his behavior. However, biological psychology has a major stumbling block in its way that really limits his ability to alter someone's personality. Let me explain. The mind contains information. Incoming information is called perception. We call new ideas in the mind learning. We call processing information in the mind thinking, reasoning, or imagining. We call stored information in the mind memory. We call outgoing information from the mind communication or action. The problem is that neuroscientists don't understand how information can be encoded in the brain. In other words, you can't look at a physical brain and know exactly what a person is thinking. And you can't connect a brain to a machine and extract memories out of it. And you can't jack a computer directly to the brain and teach it math. Here I have a motherboard for a computer. If you look real close, you'll see these little lines the information travels through to reach different parts of a computer. These little information highways in a computer are called buses. In the brain, there are nerve channels which relay information to different parts of the brain and the body. And instead of calling them buses like we do in computers, neuroscientists call them neurological pathways. Now we can see these neurological pathways in the brain. In fact, with functional imaging, we can even see if information is being passed through different pathways. What we can't see is the actual information itself. Now this is really important. We know there are specific pathways in the brain, and we know that some type of information is being passed along these pathways. But we don't know what that information is. And we don't know how to encode that information. Now one thing that we do know about this information is that it is extremely complex. In fact, the sheer volume of this information in the brain is far, far more complex than a computer. Let me give you a simple example. Right behind the eyes, we have information relays called optic nerves. And the optic nerves transports information collected by the eyes to the brain. How complex is this information? Well, by estimating the number of photoreceptors in the eyes, we can estimate the volume of visual information. And it's staggering. Here's my cell phone. And it's a pretty cool cell phone. It has a camera that takes two megapixel pictures, which is okay for still frames. In fact, high definition video is actually about two megapixels per a frame. But how does that compare to your eyes? 
based on the number of photoreceptors in our eyes, we can estimate that they are capturing about 200 megapixels at least every 1 25th of a second in its full motion video, and it's 3D. That's the power of 100 high definition cameras. And even the best supercomputer would have a hard time crunching the volume of information. If you were to think about our analogy of comparing the mind to a computer, then biological psychology views the brain as the hardware and the information in the mind as the software. But biological psychology attempts to alter the behavior by altering the hardware of the brain. Because neuroscience doesn't know how the software of the brain works, it can't physically address the mind on a software or information level. This is really important, but it's really simple. In other words, you can't put someone's fifth grade education into a pill. And you can't physically remove specific memories by cutting out portions of the brain. And you can't change someone's belief system by implanting electrodes into the brain. So psychiatry, with its drugs, brain implants, electroshock, it's utterly incapable of addressing the mind on an information level, period. There is currently no means of a physical or biological intervention that can address the information of the mind. Now, you know, most of the time when you have a problem with your computer, it has to do with your software. It sometimes will be your hardware, but usually it's your software. Imagine a computer geek that insists all problems with the computers are hardware problems, and he refuses to solve problems at an information level. So, no matter what the problem with the computer is, he insists on altering the motherboard. And this is what we call modern psychiatry. Shocking statement? Not really. You see, if you're depressed, they give you a pill to alter the brain. If you're obsessive compulsive, they give you a pill to alter the brain. If you're bipolar, they give you a pill to alter the brain. And if none of that works, they give you electroshock. And none of these techniques actually address the mind on an information level. For example, if you take an amphetamine, it just speeds up the brain. It doesn't change the information, it just speeds up the central nervous system. It's like changing or it's like overclocking the motherboard. And if you take an antipsychotic, it slows the brain down. It doesn't change the information. It slows down the central nerve system. It's like underclocking the motherboard. So because biological psychology doesn't know how information is encoded in the brain, its application is very limited. In, in fact, there has never been a single incident of a psychological problem being cured by using psychotropic drugs ever. Coming up, we are going to explore more about biological mind control and we are going to find out what biological mind control can and cannot do. And is psychiatry really mind control or is it therapy and is there a difference? And we are going to be talking about the MK Ultra program. Can you implant into someone's brain a remote control and make them work like a robot. And thanks for watching. Please rate my video and I'll see you next time. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.